All right, hey everyone. So if uh, you're gonna wanna learn how to do options trading, the first thing you're gonna wanna learn to do is uh, buy and sell options. So if you're in Robinhood, um, you can choose pretty much any stock or ETF in Robinhood. And all you have to do is click on it. So I'm gonna be using SPY for this example. And you go to this uh, trade options icon right here. You just click that. And then it's going to bring up uh, this chart of uh, options contracts for you. So to better understand the screen, I'm just going to go through it uh, slowly, um, step by step. So right here, you have the, uh, the options to buy or sell options contracts. And then right here, you have uh, the options to either buy or sell a call or a put. And a call is essentially an options contract that uh, says it's basically you betting that the stock or ETF that you're buying the option for is going to increase in value uh, in the foreseeable future. And then buying or selling a put, a put is basically just an options contract that does the exact opposite of a call. It's essentially saying that you think that the stock or ETF that you're buying the options for is going to decline in value in the future. And so we'll start off with calls here. So basically, if you want to buy a call, all you have to do is uh, just make sure that the buy and call options are highlighted. And then right here is the expiration date for the contract that you're going to be uh, buying or selling. And you can see it has like expiration dates that start with uh, July 16th, which is two days from now. And then uh, they span like, you know, every three days, every two days, and they go all the way down until uh, December 15th of 2023. So you can play like long-term options or you could do like really short-term options like uh, for July 16th. And I'm just going to be using July 16th as an example for uh, this one. So to buy a call, essentially all you have to do is uh, click on one of these options contracts. And as the uh, options contracts get more and more uh, out of the money, they get cheaper to purchase because um, in order for... Uh, for you to make a profit on these options contracts um, essentially uh, the share price would have to be above the price of your options contract because when you're dealing with options contracts you're dealing with 100 shares of a company or you know a stock or etf so if i were to click on this and i wanted to uh, buy this options contract you'd have to take a look at this uh, value on the right this one dollar and 12 cents so what this is basically telling you is that for each uh, share of this ETF that you are going to be purchasing, um, this, option, this option contract is going to be worth $1.12 uh, per uh, share. And since with options contracts, you're dealing with 100 shares, the total that this uh, contract would cost for you to purchase would be $112 because it's $1.11 or $1.12 multiplied by 100, so it'd be $112. So this, this options contract would be $112 for you to purchase, or now $110. <clears throat> and basically what this is saying is, if you wanted to purchase this options contract, you're basically saying that by July 16th, you think that the share price of SPY, the S&P 500 ETF, is going to be higher than uh, the strike price for this options contract, which is $4.37. And so basically how some people play options is that they buy an options contract worth uh, 100 shares. And then come July 16th, if, uh, if the share price of SPY is higher than 437, like let's say it's 439 or something, then that gives them the option to buy into SPY at 437 which is a strike price of their option, and then immediately sell at the current share price, which ideally by July 16th would be at 439. So you would make the, the difference. You would make the, the profit you would make would be the difference between 439 and the strike price of your options contract, which in this case would be 437. Or how some other people play options is they don't actually exercise the option. All they would do is uh, they would buy, they would buy, um, the options contract, right, for uh, like $116 now it is. And 
they would hold it and as they held the options contract as this uh share price goes up you can see the value of the options contract contracts uh increases so it goes from one dollar and fourteen cents one dollar and sixty eight two dollars and thirty three so let's say you bought like this options contract today at a uh, 437 and the share price rose right basically the value of this options contract would go from one dollar and twelve cents per share to two dollars and thirty cents per share so you would make that difference right and then you would be able to just sell the uh, options contract back to the market after it increased in value and you'd be able to keep the difference so if it was 114 235 that would be like about 120 right so pretty simple and then uh, for buying puts it is essentially the exact same thing except now the value of the contracts uh, they increase in value in the opposite direction simply because like I said before when you're buying a put you're basically um, betting that the uh, the share price is going to decrease in value so let's say uh, the share price dropped from 436 to like 434 if you had bought this uh, 434 contract at 82 uh, cents per share and then it dropped like two dollars like 436 to 434 this would increase in value from 80 to 140 or 139 and you'd be able to keep that difference um, and when it comes to selling options contracts basically how selling options contracts works is you know how for buying you're paying the premium to purchase the options contract right well if you were to sell this options contract you would be receiving this premium so let's say I sold this 437 strike price options contract expiring on July 16th for $1.87 I would essentially be receiving $187 in order to sell this options contract to the market and how this works is by July 16th if the share price of um, of SPY is below 437 then I'm going to be assigned a hundred shares of SPY so in order to sell this sell this options contract you need to have enough collateral uh, in your account to where you are capable of purchasing a hundred shares of SPY um, if uh, the situation comes where the strike price of the options contract you sold is above the share price so for this example since uh the current share price is 436.43 that multiplied by 100 is 43,600 uh 42 42 44 dollars or something so you would need to have that much money in your account and then when you sold this options contract um it would lock in your 43k as collateral and uh, you would receive this $174 as premium to your account and come expiration date July 16th if uh, the share price is lower than 437 then you are going to be assigned um, shares of SPY at whatever the share price is and then uh, since you sold the options contract at 437 um, you're basically going to be incurring the loss between the current share price and the um, and the strike price of the options contract that you sold and so basically let's say you sold this at 437 if you were uh, if this was expiring today and you were assigned shares at, at a, of SPY you would be assigned them at 436 and so you would be down like you know a couple hundred bucks or something it wouldn't really be that drastic um, and then you just I guess you'd have to wait for the share price to get back up above uh, 437 for you to uh, for you to make the money back right because you were assigned at 437 so your shares are worth four three thousand seven hundred dollars each but the current share price is 436 so it would basically be like you just bought a hundred shares of a stock at a value that's like slightly above uh, the current value or let's say if uh, you sold a put and you sold it at 436 right or whatever uh, value is below the current share price 
let's say you sold it at 436 and come expiration date, the value of the share price is above the strike price of your options contract. You would not be assigned any shares of the uh, SPY ETF. Um, basically, you would just be able to keep your premium and then on the expiration date, your collateral would be released back to you and you could just do whatever you wanted after that. So you'd get the $129 uh, for selling the options contract. Um, and then once you have 100 shares of uh, the SPY ETF, you are able to sell calls. So essentially how, call, how selling calls works is if you have 100 shares of SPY, for example, um, and let's say, you know, your shares are currently worth like whatever, sh like the share price is, right? You would basically, uh, you could sell like any of these options contracts that are above the share price, like let's say 439, right? You would receive $47 of premium and then come expiration date, if uh, the share price of SPY is higher than the strike price for your options contract, in this case, it would be 439, then you would be required to sell your 100 shares at 439, the strike price of the options contract, the call that you sold. And so let's say, for example, the downside to this would be, let's say the share price of SPY jumps from like 436 to like 446, right? Ideally, you would want to sell um, at 446 to get the max profit, but since you sold an options contract at 439, you have to sell your shares at $439 per share, even though the share price would be $446. And so the person who buys, um, the person who you sold the call to, um, they would basically be executing their right um, to buy at 439 and immediately sell at you know 446, while you would have to sell them the 100 shares at 439. So that's basically like there's just like the small downside, but it comes with um, you know the upside of actually receiving the premium for uh, selling the op selling the call option, and in the case that um, the share price doesn't actually get above the strike price of the options contract that you sold, the call option, um, you wouldn't have to sell your 100 shares. You would basically just be able to hold on to not only your premium, but also hold on to your 100 shares. And then you just be able to continue, you know, selling, you know, another call or doing whatever you wanted with, uh, with your 100 shares after that. So that's basically how uh, buying and selling calls and puts works on Robinhood and pretty much any other brokerage. It's going to be the exact same process. Maybe the format of this uh, options um, like table will look a little different, but it's the exact same uh, process. So yeah, pretty simple. Um, if you found any value out of this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more. Peace.